So Candy had her baby yesterday. Um, thankfully, they are all healthy. He is very um, excited. He was cantering around his stall in circles around Mama. So baby's check this morning is umbilicus is good, no cleft palate, uh, all the joints are good. So uh, baby's past checkup this morning, uh, heart rate, temperature, all the basic vital signs. So uh, if mom is agreeable, they can go outside for some turnout time today. We're just doing first of his twice week treatment this week. Uh, on Thursday, I was actually just treating his right ear and he responded to the sedation so well standing that he actually let me pull out 90% plus of what was in his left ear. So I did weigh it and it was just under two ounces as well. So he had a total of four ounces uh, in his ears, bless his heart, which I mean, can you imagine, you know, they use all their muscles to turn their ears and doing that with an extra two ounce in each ear, you know, that. So um, we'll see how he does today. So literally, with if he responds to this sedation like he did last week, he'll get really heavy headed and he doesn't come up and react as much when I rub it in. So I'm just gonna get it all together. Go in one good rub on each ear over and done with. So we are giving him more outside turnout time. So what I have to watch is sunlight with his ear. If I see it starting to get sunburned. Now my worry with that is, is the fact that he may not want to wear some ear covers because where his ears are so sensitive. So we'll have to balance out. Will he wear ear covers if it gets irritated by the sun or do we have to move him more in during the day and outside turn out at night? So right now I turned him out early in the morning. He loves that and uh, right now he's been out pretty much all day. So we're pulling him in for this. So we'll see uh, how he does. They look good. I'm actually very happy with them. Uh, again, it's a long process to get it to say it's completely, he's in what we call remission. Though his body has fought off the virus that way. So, uh, We'll just keep working with him and kind of go from there. This is just our little tedious of breaking open the individual little packets to combine them together so I can get one nice good stroke into his ear. So yeah, so we may have to give him outdoor turnout and indoor time. That's got you for today, okay? It's got you. I like it because even with I take off that little crusty discharge there, his ear is smooth underneath. So I can definitely tell a difference in the texture of it. So again, uh, we know it's going to get worse before it gets better. So we, we will follow along. And um, biggest thing is I'm probably am going to, if he will not agree to wear a little bonnet for his ears for sunlight, then he probably will have to stay in and day and go out at night. I did find a green one that might go with your red color. So he may dig it off and he may be like, oh, it's fashionable. So I have no clue. Your guess is as good as mine, you know. He gets a nice pretty green bonnet to go with his red tones. We'll leave that on him uh, and see if he will tolerate it or not. Glimmer's ears today look good. I can definitely tell a difference between the right ear, which we've been treating longer than the left ear. The right ear had a little bit of dried exudate there, but it wiped out easily. Again, we need to watch for sun uh, irritation. So I am attempting to cover his ears for sun exposure now. And if he doesn't want to wear his bonnet, which I suspect he will tear off when he's really fully awake, then he'll have to stay indoors during the daytime and go out at night. I'm gonna say he probably won't, but I hope he proves me wrong. Ginger, on Thursday, um, as we were taking her out for her physical therapy, she lovingly pulled her um, extension off. We uh, attempted to tape it back on. She pulled it off again, 
taped it on a second time and she kept it on long enough for me to leave the premises on Thursday and pulled it off. So she got the weekend without her extension, but lo and behold, she did not know that I was calling in a few little favors to source glue over the weekend to glue it back on today. So, because Elijah, our farrier, is not due for two weeks, and I didn't want to bug him to have to run out here to glue one little shoe on if I could source the glue, so that's what I done. So, now we'll see if uh, who wins the battle today. Fingers crossed. And we'll see how it goes. So I really have no clue. Put a little alcohol on her hoof just to get everything off of there, dry it out a little bit. Looks so much better, darling. And we may, yeah, we may always have just a little bit that we notice on that tendon there, but with time, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, that's what it's going to be essentially. It's going to, and we'll have a little bit of a bulge there, but again, she's light years ahead from where she was. So, and we got a little irritated with all of her bandaging. So that's, it's okay on that too. Yeah, hair's growing back. While, she, while that's still drying a little more, I'm going to go grab the suture removal scissors and take those out today while she's sedate. Sweetheart, you have been a project, but that's okay. She is trimming up the old hoof glue that was there and straightening up her foot a little bit and just doing a kind of a little bit of maintenance in between. Okay, Kimberly, if you don't care, come in on the front, build it up on the hoof on wall. The yeah, on the toe there. Uh, one minute and then six to fully set. So once you get that on there, we'll saran wrap it and try to keep it six minutes. I know, um, it's like an eternity. Well, there's... Be good enough to get us. Okay, somebody set their clock for, for our watch for five minutes. Yes, while well, I peel those off, we'll replace it with Elasticon. Okay, Ginger. I love you, Miss Ginger. Can you be my friend today? Because remember, we have a new baby to take care of right now. So, yes, baby needs some attention today. So today is baby day. Currently, now that the key test is when we walk out and then will it stay on today before I leave tonight? In humans, we kind of like scabs. In horses, it tells the body that it's touching and it quits growing properly on healing in. So in horses, they're kind of finicky. If you take the scabs off, the skin margins will keep migrating in versus just leaving that open part. And in humans, we do the opposite and let scabs form. So it's just a difference in the species that way and just makes you a better cosmetic result in the end. So far, everything's went well. Uh, we cleaned up. Kimberly done a great job trimming up the old to give us a better here a layer there. Uh, the glue has held. We did double just do our Elasticon just to give us a little extra hold there. Even though we know Elasticon alone won't hold it. So it's actually the glue that's gonna hold it on, but it makes me feel better too to have it there. And, but overall she's using it more natural position. Looks light years better compared to what it did when we started with. So I am still happy with Miss Ginger, even though she gives me a little roller coaster of emotion sometimes. We're still on the good progress. So we'll keep, keep going and get her finished out and then she'll be ready to go to a new home. So, okay, sweetheart. Oh, I know, it's your strangles booster that we've held off on doing. Yeah, it's a good girl, I know. We're gonna take a progress x-ray so we can kind of monitor how she's doing as her rehab's um, happening. So we're not just looking on the outside, we're also able to see what her bones are doing on the inside.
Okay, it doesn't look that bad in real life, darling. I think it's still better. Um, it's better than, than it, it was, was too. so yeah. Yeah, we just have to get that those hills. Yeah, the hill to was down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We still got work to go, but we're still better than we but were. But this shows like how much better she is now mm -hmm. versus before the treatment, mm -hmm. how bad she would be yeah. if she wasn't getting this yeah. rehab yeah. and trying to fix her because stuff like this can't go unattended. Right, she won't load it if there's glue. That's why I'm like, we didn't, but okay. But the hill, it's still attached, it's, right? At the moment. At the moment. So we have an extra tip as a backup. It's not glued down. Oh, yeah. It's got movement because I didn't pack it in, but if we pack it in, she doesn't load the hill. So that's okay. We're in a catch-22 with her right now. Exactly, because we need her to load the hill. Okay. It develops better. Yeah, because if we load her hill, she's never going to use the hill. Yeah, I definitely don't want to fill that up with stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid, but it does give us a weak point for her to get it off. Right. Again, she's going to make us work for it. find around here very much now is mud. It's kind of got hot. It's almost 80 degrees. It's dry. My uh, my thermometer said it was like 12% humidity yesterday. I don't think that's reality, but it's a lot drier. So anyway, it's going to be a good auction. It's going to be nice and warm tomorrow morning. It should be mid fifties when we're out uh, doing the auction assessment. So it's going to be great. So far we're just starting to get the stuff loaded up into the trailer that we're going to need. Uh, I believe we got halters and shavings and we also got WD-40 in our milk crate that has random stuff in it. So uh, we're slowly getting loaded up and then as soon as it is ready we're going to hit the road. What do you think? How many horses are we getting? Oh. Well I was trying to act natural there but I'm a terrible actor so I'll just go natural. Um, so I think that we're going to get the correct number of horses tonight. As far as an accurate assessment, I think in, I'm feeling 14 horses and some few little ones. Oh, okay. What do you Jason think? Jason had been saying inaccurate answers. Um, that's how he's going to answer questions. So my inaccurate answer for tonight is uh, 52. What do you think about that? I think that we might get 52 hooves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My accurate answer is probably 20. Okay. Well, how many horses do you think we're getting? All of them. Great answer. Um, 30? 22. Mm. 26. I'm gonna guess 25. That's, Just, a, good, that's a good number. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think we can do that. Our auction rescue team is getting ready to head out and get to the auction so that we can rescue more horses tonight. We're waiting for Dr. Nancy, I think. She's been very busy though. She's had a lot going on today, but maybe we should go help her. Yeah, let me see, see if, if it's the donkeys that are holding her if, up. If uh, she needs some help. John, I see you filming me. It's been a morning, okay? The boys took over Ginger's place. I'm like, what can we do? Did they tell you? I heard it was rough. It was literally testicles pulling off in my hand. Okay. Literally, I have you never, have cut them off. and I'm not superhuman so strength, but both of them Today like, you were. they're like, has that ever happened before? And I'm like, they just no. Fell off. Hmm. Literally, the cream master muscle about that far above the testicle. Wow. So, apparently. Just four pins. So, you also yeah. broke that thing though. So, uh, yeah. it's definitely the superhuman strength it's a super, today. Apparently, I'm yeah. just totally <laughs> superhuman wow. today. Again, they just want to test my, yeah. my endurance. It's amazing how Keith can stack, well, like, it actually makes it here. It makes a turn, like, too. That is cheating, Keith. I think you always have to know not to stand near anything when Keith loads it like this. Just back know. up and... I don't load it. The tractor, the guys at Tractor Supply load it. Well, you know, when you bring a load like this, I just step back until it all falls off and then... And then we'll help you load unload. 
moving. Wow. Dr. Nancy says she's ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see how good of a day it's going to be. It's been a wonderful day so far, so let's keep the trend going. <laughs> How's it going, John? Are you ready to go? I am ready to go. Um, with my position right here, it looks like I'm going to be last in line. I'm okay with that. Follow up the pack. Make sure you uh, know. Man, everything from from rear. Yeah, I'm ready. Nice. It's kind of nice going to auction. Yeah, and it's a nice day too. It I is. mean, it's a hot day, but I prefer. Yeah, I've got day. the AC blaring. It's probably about 50 degrees in here when I got the window up. That's what I was rolling with that one. Nice. I'll see you later. See ya. Look, there's dust. There's actually dust. If you look over here, there's dust blowing around. That's like hot. unbelievable. We were able to rescue 23 amazing horses tonight. There's big ones, there's little ones, there's fat ones, there were skinny ones, there was lame ones. I'm hoping there were some sound ones. I feel like we got a broad spectrum of horses tonight and that was only thanks to your support. 23 precious lives saved from shipping to slaughter. The kill buyer was here, he was buying horses. Unfortunately, we were not able to send him home with an empty trailer tonight. But we rescued and changed the lives for 23 amazing horses. And that was, again, thanks to your support. How does it feel to be the winner of guessing how many horses we're going to rescue? I didn't think it was going to be 22. I thought it was going to be a little bit more, but that's great. I'm glad we rescued 22 lives. Uh, plus one. Plus one, yes. Right now, we're just filling up water troughs. We're waiting on, I guess, the invoice for the sale to see what numbers we got to make sure that all of the horses that we think are ours actually match. <laughs> I didn't bring the headlights again, so I need to remind me, pack the headlamps. We have them, they're charged. So they are color coded for size. So red does not mean it's getting put down. Red means it's a miniature. Yellow is regular size and green is draft size. So makes it easier this time of night to grab a size without having to dig through everything. So there's no special meaning of last act of kindness or not. It's sizing is what the color codes are. We ended up with quite a few horses in this smaller pen over here, so right now we're just um, kind of moving them over uh, so there's not so many packed into a small pen. But while we do that, we are um, checking the numbers and making sure that all the ones in there are ours. So we're microchipping them right away just to make sure we can check their temps. That way, if anyone's sick, we can separate them um, and hopefully keep them from infecting anyone if they have anything that might spread. Is there a brand over there? Let me check. Nope. I would seriously say warm blood. Okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, what's your hip number? Hip number 1076, no microchip. Because this thing is like, I'm 17 hands. Oh, he's... We're like 17, two, three at least, well, 18. I'll let you do this. You don't want to be really happy. I don't know this horse, you know? My self-preservation has gotten um, higher the older I get. I'm trying to get this horse caught here. Um, it's pretty tight in here, and he's got his butt towards me right now, so let's see if I can get him to turn his head towards me. That way I can get up to him. Looking at his teeth, he does seem to be a bit older and he is definitely skinny. So uh, once we get back to the shelter, I'm sure we'll be able to figure out more. Um, Dr. Nancy can do a very thorough examination on him and figure out what is best for him. Welcome. Sure, why not? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. They said he hates men. I think he was kidding. He said his name is Big John, he hates men as I was walking <laughs> in. 
Uh, we have one that the no back tag child uh, doesn't exist doesn't right now. Yeah. Did you have that with his, or did you need to write who it was? Stud. That was a stud. Yeah. yeah. That would be 1072. Yes. Yeah. This is why we double check paperwork and triple check it. So again, we're just we're figuring it out. But um, yeah. Hey, what's on my mind? But I promise I will try this time. You're lined up wrong, buddy. You might want to get your anatomy a little better lined up. So. It's getting late. <laughs> the filter is gone. I'm like, if you're gonna do it and get on my list to get castrated, I'm gonna critique your, you know, efforts. Everything really does come in waves, the way Tani says. You know, it's this this week, actually today, it's just jacks who and amount everything. Well, I can't say for sure what causes it, but it happens a lot, especially in older horses, and uh, basically just makes their back dip lower than normal. It's bad. We'll take our uh, measuring stick as a comparison to show you how dramatic the drop is. So yeah, we'll do a little visual on that. It's past 11. We might get to go back to the motel soon and we might be able to get a little um, there's this sleep. Open. Probably not. I got well, it. That was the work. What is he doing? Playing with the box. <laughs> Yeah. That was uh, the no, curl no, yeah. He's playing with the box. That makes sense. Yeah, he doesn't need to be moved. Take these walls down, brick by brick for you. The horses are all cared for, they're all accounted for. We're gonna get a few hours of sleep and uh tomorrow morning, first thing, we're gonna be live on YouTube and doing the auction assessment. And uh, Corey's getting this horse microchipped. And uh, it's amazing if you do a lot beforehand, how much faster it goes the next morning. So anyway, we're gonna get a few hours of sleep at the motel and be all refreshed and energized in the morning. So we're finishing up our initial assessment after auction tonight. We've ended up with 23 horses. The good news is uh, there is nobody that I have seen so far that we're gonna have to give the last act to kindness before we leave. That's a good thing. There's a few skinny ones. There's some lameness issues when we get back. But right now, unless something changes overnight, everybody is sound enough to travel back to Horse Plus, which is a good thing. So everybody is fit to travel. And again, we'll still sort back. We got lots of x-ray notes already to make on several of them. Lexi is really cute. Oh, well, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> 23 horses rescued last night and uh, we got a few hours of sleep. I know I didn't get nearly enough sleep, but that's auction night. So gonna hit the road over to the auction. It's just a few minutes and pick them up, get them assessed and the trailers transported safely back to the shelter. Sometimes it's a habit from being in a stall. That one may actually legitimately be hungry. So that's always a little things to take note of just so we know behaviors, things like that. You know, sweetheart, we get you some hay when we get back, okay? Last night, really age is the biggest thing that comes to my memory without looking at my notes. Yeah, age is the number one issue. Yeah, 20 plus easily. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the we have some lameness issues, so we'll definitely have x-rays going on. Okay, there's our earls. 
And I'll take a peek at her teeth this morning real quick. We're ancient too, unfortunately. It is warm here. You'll notice Tani is in short sleeves. That is sure sign that the weather is very pleasant. Want to say something about the uh, mm. pleasant weather? Well, people like to complain that we talk about the weather, but that's because it majorly impacts our lives. If it's cold, we're miserable. If it's too hot, we're dying and the um, phones that we're trying to do lives on are dying because of the heat. Um, last year, I think it was, Jason had to stick his phone in a water trough to cool it down to get the live back yes, going. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, but, you know, right now it's like perfect. So that's great. Sweetheart, you look worse than daylight. You look worse than daylight. Not well. She's very swayed back. Body condition score is low, and I'm going to suspect that her, she is in her 20 plus, but we will confirm that. She looks a little worse in daylight than she did last night, so. Yes, unfortunately, we're Methuselah aged, 25 plus, bless her heart, so. Okay, sweetheart. <sighs> yep. This video has been sponsored by Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. It has not. It has not. They have not sponsored us. If they'd like to sponsor us, you know, we we, we need more support. So uh, don't think that Coca-Cola is a huge sponsor and we, we don't need any donations anymore because that's not reality. We need, we need. I need my caffeine. I don't drink coffee and the hotel does not sell Mountain Dew. So therefore I go to the backup caffeine. So this is to keep the caffeine headache away. This is a Rocky Mountain horse. It's a breed a horse, they are gated. They got, I think like seven different gates, something like that, don't quote me on that. But they do have a lot of different gates. When I was in Sacramento working on a ranch, that ranch had a couple of them and they were pretty fun to ride. They came from um, a trail riding facility. So all three of them should be completely broke to ride. But we will know more once we get back to the shelter and they're done with their quarantine. Looks very similar to all the Rocky Mountains I've seen, so yeah. yes. You kind of look for that chocolate color, and in the main, you want to see it lighten up like that. That's our all natural Rocky Mountain features. What do we know about this horse? It's club, a lot club footed. Club footed, okay. Yeah. All right, how does a draft horse become a finished horse? It goes to Finland. Makes me look short. Oh, well, I'm 17 because, hands at the top of my head. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. So Kimberly is 17 hands at the top of her head. I'm holding the phone level, and the horse goes on up from there, about another three inches. So yeah, at least 17, 17 three. three. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of short, so you can see. So Tani's kind of short. I'm going to hold the camera and make her look even smaller. No, I'm kidding. But look at that. There is like, it's a long way. You can barely reach up there. Yes. So. What's my going Oh, yeah. I told see. you he's a pony. Yeah, he's a he's a pony compared to Corey, but he's gonna he's gonna take up some room on the trailer. So it could be something recent, or it's like it might not be his bone. Like sometimes we fill them and they're rock hard, um, but this one is is got a soft feel to it. So we'll see what's happened. So see how this, this horse's entire oh, hip yes. is dropped? Oh, That's yes. usually like they they broke their hip. Yep. Usually ish, Drop, right, yeah. Dr. Nancy? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Like, left, that's, left that's why it's walking weird. Yeah. And I didn't see it until it turned, but it's, it's, it's got some major, major problems. Yeah. Super sad. We can separate one by itself and put the other one with gelding so there's no mares accidentally being bred, things like that. So it's a logistical issue when you have multiple males that are very strong personalities. So. Elvis really likes to talk to the ladies too, so. So she's full yeah. size, right? Yeah, so 
basically a breeder had her and then she was too small for breeding. So yeah, she's mine. And uh she's about two pounds. Look. Yeah, she's right at two pounds. Um, I did send a picture of this little mini to one of our donors last night, and she did donate to help rescue this mini and some other horses. Little horse Tawny after me. So now we have two Tawnies here. All right, we are done, and now we just got to get them all loaded up. First load's loaded up and uh, they're all pretty comfortable together so now Cory's going to back up his truck and trailer and we'll get the next load on. We got them all in there and the big draft horse just started backing up, sent the gate flying. Come on, go! We just loaded a bunch of ginormous horses, and I don't mean little horses or big horses, I mean ginormous horses. These are some heavy duty horses, but uh, Corey's got them, and we're gonna hit the river real soon as soon as I load up my trailer. So, well, not my trailer, but Horse Plus's trailer attached to my trailer. So, it, that was going too smooth. Like, they all just walked in, walked in the trailer, we're shutting the gate, and the big old draft horse decided to back on out and sent the gate flying, and. And then all the horses came piling out and then, yeah, they're all in there now and they're safe. This horse is just too skinny. We were gonna put her on with some other horses, but I'm afraid she's gonna go down in the trailer and I didn't want her to go get trampled. So um, hopefully she'll stay on her feet, but we're gonna put her in here with some other really old horses and the little minis. I think she'll ride better and we can take the, the trailer slower. Come on. Trailer number three is loaded and we're ready to hit the road to the shop. Went well, we have majority, 90 plus percent are 20 years old or older. So we have some lameness issues, lots of x-rays to take. Uh, unfortunately, our one young horse, the three-year-old, has a dropped hip already. So, But overall, they all are medically sound to transport. So that's a good thing. None needed the last act of kindness right away, so that's even better. So uh, we'll see when we do further workups when we get back, but we do have a high percentage of older 20 plus year old horses, so. Kind of like we're gonna have a nursing home going down the road. Exactly, so. We got, do have three intact males and then our elders, so it's kind of a mix there along the way. So unique personalities, again, they all gotta learn to get along. They'll sort that out on the way back. Yeah, but we did, we did spend a lot of time getting them sorted out where we, we believe they're gonna travel good now. Yes, so. they're gonna travel the best yeah. they can with their buddies that they have to travel to get back yeah. with, so. Yeah. But once you get on the road, they kind of settle down.
Good morning, it's auction intake day. Everybody's over at the auction house uh, doing their thing, getting the horses loaded so they can bring them over here. Uh, we've been running around trying to make sure everything's done on this end. Uh, I've been brush hogging and stuff just to do things for the day. And they come by and they've been digging out this area and putting chert down and they uh, hit one of the pipes yesterday or the day before and fixed it but as they were backfilling everything uh, yesterday i guess the compression snapped the pipe again excavator being on it so uh, he's over there bucketing water out right now so we can get down to it and fix it and we'll have the water back on probably in about 10 minutes 15 minutes so everything should be back to normal We are getting ready to, to fail the operation. We are getting ready to get the supplies for the medical team for quarantine area so we can do auction intake. All right, here we are, ready to go. Ooh, David was up here. Look how clean, and all the stalls are fresh. Woohoo! As of last count, we rescued 23 horses from the auction last night, and our auction rescue team is on the way back. We are getting set up for our intake, and we are just gonna unload everything, get it all ready, so when they get here, they can start intake. The vests, ha! We forgot the vests. Yeah. Thank you, Caitlin. I need to make myself some kind of checklist. But yeah, we can run down. Come back up. Gotta get our safety gear. We came down to get the x-ray aprons, which we had forgotten, and then Keith needed me to help him check water lines. We are on hole patrol, evidently. We're, we're gonna go stare at this hole and see if it leaks as Keith turns on the water over there. And then if it's leaking, I have to wave my arms and jump up and down and let him know. Because that's what you do on auction intake day. You have things that go wrong, always. We're ready! I hear water. It's not leaking. They're leaving Columbia about 10 minutes ago. Well, looks good. I guess that means our water will be back on in our barns and outdoor areas. Yay. I didn't see any leaks. I did think I saw something, but I don't know if it was something shifting or, but I don't see any water running, so. I'll go look. So we got that all taken care of. And now we're gonna go back up to quarantine and get ready for auction intake. We just got back. Um, we've got a lot of horses and we're gonna unload the most critical ones into this pen just so they can start eating and they won't be around the other horses that might push them around. So we're gonna get them unloaded.
we decided to switch the trailers around because first we backed up the trailer with all the stallions and um, the mixed multitude that are divided. And we decided that we'd go ahead and load all the mares and geldings off first out of the other trailer. And then we'll be able to handle the boys better. I lost my running board. Did you see that? I lost my running board. Yeah, I just bounced. What part of was it? It was the step for my running board. Oh, it just bounced off. Well, I've almost broke my ankle on it three times now, so it finally decided to fall off. Probably should just get rid of it. The Ford? If it, oh. Uh, <laughs> if you ask Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been giving them a hard time about Chevys, so I don't blame them. So now the boys are getting back, back up. The, the first divider at the end doesn't have any stallions. And then the next divider is geldings with a stallion and a jack donkey that's intact. And then a divider all by himself is a cranky stallion. So we got them here. It was a little complicated, but now we just gotta get them unloaded. A stallion that has something on his face that is probably body involvement. It doesn't seem to be affecting him, but because he is a stallion, I'm going to keep him separate from everybody. And he does like to be very active and try to jump the panels a little bit. So just because we do have mares, I'm just keeping him away from the mares that way by keeping him in the stall. So the other one is a Tennessee walking horse, uh, intact male. He does have what appears to might be a hernia on his side. He wouldn't let me touch it at market. So it could be an abscess, could be a hernia. He's one that's had his legs wrapped. You can tell by the hair wave on him. And uh, he does like to kick when you try to look at that side. And he did try to bite a little bit. So we're just gonna put him away from the mares as well, just to keep chaos down. Elvis is lucky, cause he's our little jack donkey that uh, we don't have a stall for him, so. Elvis gets a buy right now and he gets to enjoy some freedom because of that. It's easiest just to set panels up and direct the horse where they should go than to try to maybe put a halter on a horse that's you know showing kind of aggressive behavior a dangerous behavior, so we do move panels around a lot here, and um, this makes for a calm, easy uh, situation with a horse instead of fighting them on it and potentially endangering them, endangering us. Noisy, though. Now we're going to get busy. Is everyone settled where they should be? Okay, Miss Swayback Mama, let's do some x-rays. It is going to be a little bit warm <laughs> wearing all this lead in this heat. I want to get her sedated, so it's just okay, see how she does. Good job, Granny. Again, that's... A little lower on Okay. Yeah, a little right there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so we have a good vertical drop. Yeah. Almost a foot, probably. So that's four inches. So we're like... Eight, ten nine, inches. Nine, nine to ten. Okay. Nine to ten drop, bless her heart. She's really dehydrated. Very, yeah, she is. She came out of Florida. Does that tell you anything of how bad she's went through the circuit? Okay, oh yeah. Mm, yeah, that's worse. Where's my little hand at to zoom in? Yeah, those are pretty much almost fused together where they've remodeled 
from it being that way. Yeah, we got some remodeling going on, some lytic areas where it's trying to adapt to it. Oh, bless your heart. This is uh, who I'm calling Granny because that's the uh, name that was on her Coggins where she came out of Florida last month. Uh, she has very extreme sway back. X-ray has, of course, verified that, but she has bony changes where it has the vertebrae have kind of in the process of fusing together and then there's some lytic areas. So think of it as very bad arthritis, osteoarthritis along her spine from being that extremely dipped down. Unfortunately, she is 25 plus with extreme sway back on that part. The donor, Gail, that donated to rescue her last night. Little Tawny definitely needed saving because um, she just, age is caught up with her all the way around. Feet issues, which is common, and the more smaller they get, the more issues we have with their feet. So, uh, yeah, I'm, we're gonna give Tawny the last act of kindness so the poor little girl doesn't have to suffer. Um, the stallion is probably like choking or something. We're gonna have to take this again. Oh, he's drinking? That's not normal. You know, I was thinking that earlier. I'm gonna watch you, sweetie, see what you're doing. This may be another reason why we ended up with you. I'm gonna test you, I'm gonna give you cookies. Because we do know he has this defect here, that may be playing a factor into his noise that way. So I'm gonna test you. He has a, it seems to be bone on the side of his face. Uh, so that may, I'm gonna test him with the treat or two just to see what he does. On the live, yeah. I talked about how maybe it was similar to Halo, but it hadn't ruptured. That could be a possibility, yes. Very good possibility. So yeah, I'm gonna test him and see what he does just with a little bit right here. Yeah. Here, sweetie. Because when he, tries to drink water, he doesn't even do a normal movement on drinking. He kind of flaps his lips instead of normally drawing the water in like most of them would. So probably what I'm going to go do is while we're x-raying, I will go get the stomach tube to probably sedate him and just make certain we don't have an obstruction along the way. Yeah, that sounds terrible. I know, <laughs> yeah. What, is that his breathing? That's, he, he doesn't drink water normally, so after, when y'all get next one sedated, I'm gonna run get the stomach tube and we will make certain there's not an obstruction. Not yeah, somewhere. yeah. Because even when he went to eat the uh, treats, it wasn't a normal mouth movement on that. So I think we got more going on in that mouth than we realize. The stallion, when he's drinking water, he's making a really horrible sound and we wanna make sure he's not choking. So we're gonna go ahead and bring him in, uh, start an intake on him, but the focus is, is he okay? Cause he's making some really rough sounds when he's drinking. Okay, game plan when we bring him out, I will try to pass the tube down his, um, nasal passage into his esophagus to prove that he's not physically choked, that he's got something weird going on the way he drinks. So that's the main thing is to rule out a physical obstruction. Make sure he's at. not suffering in there yeah. somehow. Okay, go ahead and pull him on out. And again, this one, the blood flow with the ethmoids, he may bleed, he may not bleed, depends on what mood he feels to be in today. X-ray his skull, because that side does not feel compared to the other side. You got some stuff going on, child. And again, we didn't see you drink last night. Nothing? Oh, no, no, no. Look at that one's bottom premolar on the right side. Seriously, just take a look. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy cow. It's like three inches long. 
This child's got multiple issues, which means that growth has been there a while. This child's got multiple. Plus you need a good sheath cleaning too, by the way, buddy. Weird. Oh, that's so bad. Yeah, that's really yeah, weird. that's yeah. See if we can get a head down into so we can show that. Yeah, the, I think uh, our swallowing issue is a been there issue. We just did not observe it because we didn't see him physically drinking last night. He had a tub of water, but like today we noticed it because we were here right with him while we were working up the others. So. Yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah. That, it's like that a, is the biggest tooth I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's like a tusk. Wow. Oh. This one oh on the bottom? Goodness. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, is there one? You good? Yeah. Okay. It's hard to tell with those bad teeth. Well, yeah, he's sideways too. He's scissored mouth. Yeah. This is literally at an angle on his. Yeah. So he's been like this years. He's probably at least 10, 12, maybe at least. So they probably unfortunately have bred him, unfortunately, and that may be genetically passed on. Issues. Yeah. So he got used and they're done with him now because that's what I told you, it does not feel right back in yeah. the nasal cavity. It's just not um, that's so I symmetrical. Think, I think that's an adaption for chewing from one side to the other. But I suspect he's got to the point now why he's losing weight, and that's why they moved him on down the road. This one has, um, again, beautiful color, intact male, so that's kind of a red flag. Why is one that beautiful colored? You know, a lot of people like that color pattern. Why was he at auction? Unfortunately, he did have a swelling on the side of his face, which felt like bone, so okay, we knew that. Well, um, when we got here today, we noticed a weird sound, walked over and it was him trying to drink water, I would say, because he doesn't do the normal lip motion like a horse drinking water does. Kind of flaps his lips around in it. I gave him a few treats to test him. Even moving his muzzle around in the treats was not a normal movement, which was another red flag. Um, we brought the tube up just to rule out him being choked. Tried the left side, I'm like, it just doesn't feel the same. There's something not right. So look, let's x-ray the head. Let's go ahead and do that. And definitely confirm some bony pathology along those, uh, that tooth area. He has the most extreme upward hook on his bottom premolar two on the right side I have seen personally. I mean, it's like literally this tall. So this horse has multiple dental issues that is affecting, again, he's underweight, affecting his ability to eat and drink functionality-wise now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Mr. Elvis, or Jack, is uh, very much interested in Frost, who was staying up in the 10-acre pasture in quarantine because she had a little more uh, nasal discharge. So just as precaution, we kept her up here. Unfortunately, she is in heat today, so she is literally teasing him, Elvis, um, by literally backing up to the fence of like, please breed me, I'm in heat. So uh, we will definitely take care of the situation and get her relocated and him relocated so they're not torturing each other with the situation of hormones and nature taking over. <laughs> yes. Oh, but we are. Frost, I'm regretting putting you over there right now, but we had to put him somewhere for the night. Yeah, that's fine, yes. Put him somewhere other than right there, yes. It's called spring of the year. Love is in the air, hormones in the air. It's nature, so. <laughs> Twitter paid it. And she's like, an available male, come see me. So, no. I think, it, I think it needs to go into the chute and then we uh, we have it back out to send it out if we don't want to send it around. And it is male, correct? Yes. yes. Gelding. It is gelding or intact? Who wants to find out? See testicles? Mm, nope. Maybe. Potentially. Why don't you reach down there, Corey? 
Do you want to? Be my guest. Okay, then I'm gonna squeeze them. I don't. I, I didn't see any testicles, but I also didn't see any scars. There are no testicles here. I think we're good. If he had them, they're a true crypt torque that you can't feel. So he's probably gelded. He's probably gelded, yeah. Okay, little they buddy. There's your orals. Hello, friend. Vaccines, or Coggins. Okay, I'm gonna get your shots first. Mm-hmm. Now, you're short. I don't work upside down with my wrist. So we're gonna have to work with me. I mean, you can't help it, you're short. Beautiful. Uh, I'm just trying to get this halter off of him right now. Um, he has had it on him a while, so it is on there pretty good. And I can't get that latch undone, so I have to cut it off there. Yeah, it's been on there a while. He's got an indent in his bone up here on his uh, nose too, so he's definitely had this a while. You could actually, you could actually feel the indent in there. I bet that feels a lot better, doesn't it, kid? So we have finished day one of auction intake. When we got back, we done our most critical uh, little Tawny, the little uh, pony that was in the pen with her. Of course, unfortunately, they needed the last act of kindness. They had uh, extreme pathology in their P3s, their final digit in their uh, hoofs there. We have processed, done lots of x-rays. How many x-rays did we do today? 118. So, so we are sorting through those, evaluating those. So those horses are hanging out. We did get the uh, mule processed, got into it, done on it. Uh, Elvis got uh, tried to make girlfriend when he got here, so he had to get segregated. He tried so, to make a mule. Yes, he tried to breed Frost, so we, we, we eliminated that as a temptation. So, but overall, um, 23 horses saved. Uh, Percentage-wise, a uh, majority of them were over 20 plus. So again, that goes a lot with the quality of life, lameness issues, but um, overall, it's been a good day. 23 saved, so we've had one out of Texas, one out of Florida based on the Coggins. The Coggins actually matches the horse, so these horses were shipped through the auction system until they ended up being rescued by us. A lot of these older horses end up bouncing around from auction to auction, kind of in the slaughter pipeline, floating around in there. and. Uh, you know, trader will pick up a free old horse or, you know, mm -hmm. even have their, in California, they were really good about sending their family and their little girls, kids in. Like there was this one family and he'd send his wife and his daughter in to get these horses and then he'd take them to auction and make money off of them. And we, we are going to start a buyout program and I know you were slipping some flyers to yes. some, some traders. Because a lot of these horses that we got in this auction, they were the ideal candidates for the buyout program. They're old, 25, 20 plus, they have multiple issues, lameness, kissing spine, that way. And again, they're not fixable issues and it's better to give them a good goodbye than to ship them around through these multiple auctions. And these traders aren't going to do the right thing for the horse. They're going to say, well, it's not my problem. I got another auction. It was like this. But if they have a horse that is in poor condition, they know like, hey, Horse Plus will give me $200 for this horse. We can get that horse help and maybe it is adoptable, mm -hmm. but we don't know. And if we can keep them out of the auctions, get them here, get them safety. Um, hopefully this buyout program does really good and we need sponsors for it. So uh, check out our website and become a sponsor because if you don't like to see the things that we see, we don't like to see it either. But if we can eliminate the suffering of being in the slaughter pipeline and just coming straight here, instead of bouncing from one auction to the next and being held from you know, there's a lot of weeks sometimes yep. they're being held before the next auction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's things that we can change for these horses, but we need you to help us.
We are going to go through and look at our quarantine horses, just get a visual on them today, our intake from auction, and see how everybody looks today. We've already, I already looked at them this morning, doing my afternoon rounds at this point, so. Even if you're too scared to fight, there's a light in each new day. So here in this pasture, we have the four that we still need to do x-rays on. Everybody is kind of picking at ease, which is what you want to see. So again, they were good this morning. Everybody is looking good. Nobody's looking depressed, you know, into the world of like, where am I at? They're all just kind of calm and at home, which is what we want them to settle in and relax. So these ladies with their halters on, because normally we do not leave halters on, the reason these were left on, the one came with her halter on, the other one, as we went to put the halter on, we realized she had swellings underneath, which is a red flag of potentially high risk for strangles because there's not many things that cause swelling underneath the chin. Now, the story is from the gentleman that brought her in that the guy he bought her off of had the halter on too tight. So they automatically, they were in the pen together at the market. So they automatically are staying together as exposure, if it is strangles. Uh, I have not physically, other than the initial intake, touched her, because I'm letting, again, letting it run its course. Uh, the plan is Monday is to take a swab, send it in to confirm yes or no, positive strangles or not, just so that way we know how to manage things. But they're by themselves no nose contact with anybody else so uh, if it is strangles we will keep an eye on everybody that came in with them but we have kept them separate because of high risk because of that so this is mr elvis and the mule and the mr elvis was very very interested in the ladies yesterday miss frost really wanted to make friends with mr elvis uh, typically we do allow the jacks 30 days to settle in before i do castrate just so they get into where we're at so he will remain separate so he can't accidentally breed any females in the meantime and we're walking and take a look at our two other two studs that are in the isolation stalls we have not done their intake x-rays on the walking horse yet we did on the spotted yesterday we're going to give him the weekend to chill out because i do know he is eating and drinking and before we make final determination on him so, but we'll go take a look at them and see how they look in their stalls. This morning they were fine. Again, just like to at least minimum uh, morning check, uh, evening check, midday check, and then before I leave for, finally for the day. You have ate all your hay, so I'm gonna go grab you a little bit more hay. You have ate, so I'm going to get both of you all some hay real quick. If there's some up here, if not, I'll have to have David bring some up. I'll put my light in a box. He's, what he's doing, he's working it off of that side. And that's why that one muscle is so much larger than the other muscle. And that is from years of not having proper care on his teeth. That is the point now I can't fix all of that. And honestly, his teeth are so bad, I really can't give you a good age on him because they're so misaligned. It's taken away all of our normal, um, taking away all of my normal landmarks for aging on him. I'm dragging behind me. Okay, perfect. I've got the heavy load. <laughs> oh. Okay, they're just okay. It takes two people oh, to do this. this job. Now, these are supposed to be organized by size, so we will see if we can manage to keep them by size, hanging them up. Green is draft, yellow is regular, and red is mini. Now, again, there's different brands, so the regulars tend to be the most variable in size when we're putting them on. So as we use them more and more, if we think it needs to be resized to a different, you know, than what we've listed it, we can always just change it out. But again, it just helps us in a hurry to pull one. At least we're semi-close from the get-go. And most times you can make do if it's a little bigger than necessary. So that way, 
For me personally, it helps me just to speed up when I'm grabbing a halter and know I've got the right size from the get-go. Elvis, you want treats? Elvis! This is how I learn who is uh, food motivated and who is not. Because now I'm letting him eat out of my hand because I've already touched all my horses down below on their treatments for the day. So I'm not worried about taking something back. This is a quarantine bag of treats. So he is definitely a food motivated individual. Usually the mules are a little bit more hesitant. They don't trust as much. Um, he's interested. He's like, what you got up there? But he's like, I don't trust her yet. So we'll see if he comes around the next couple of weeks. So a lot of them will once you learn the lady with the white truck and the treat bag is not a bad thing in the mornings. Okay, sweeties. This group had their x-rays yesterday and we're letting them settle for the weekend. Again, a little bit of more evaluation. Uh, we'll take into account, right now everybody is quote, medically sound. Nobody is in urgent need of any medical attention. So we have what we have on x-rays, then we'll see how they do in the field before we make final determinations. Uh, the only bad thing about this auction is the only young horse we had, the three-year-old, had the drop-down hip, you know, knock down hip. These ladies are all 20 plus. So unfortunately, a lot of them are quality of life issues. They're just old and their owners didn't want to deal with the end of life decisions. So again, we've x-rayed, we've documented the issues we found and we're just giving them time to settle in to see how they settle to a new environment that way. So we know some of them come out, one of them came out of Florida, one came out of Texas. And those are only the ones that we can verify based on the coggins they came in with. There's some of them that we'll never know how far they've traveled to end up before we ended up getting them. So, so we'll go see who is friendly in here and who's not. If the moon gives one of the red mares will come up, I know for a fact. The sun stops hey, babe. As we wait on the timing, together we find it. There's more than one way to go home. Yeah, there's more than one.